Hello everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Pradyot for inviting me for this discussion. Today, as we are here for this discussion, I would like to share with you some of the points that are of main consideration in osteoarthritis. In our general practice, the daily routine which I observed when I was pursuing my bachelor's and master's in sports physiotherapy, I saw that people were doing the same thing. An orthopedic surgeon or physician was recommending some, you know, prescriptions to their patients writing it is osteoarthritis of the let's say right or left knee and people were coming to physiotherapist either in clinics or hospitals with the prescription and saying okay we have this thing do you have uh, this particular equipment or even if they don't ask you your brain strikes okay it is osteoarthritis of the knee now we are ready quadriceps of the knee quadriceps hamstring isometrics quadriceps isometrics and then you have your stretches for the calf, hands, treatment complete. But do you think so that uh, it is really justified? I don't think so. Because the treatment which we are giving to each and every patient is not individualized. It's the same for each and every patient. In one patient, you have some other issue. In the other one, you have some other presentation. So how can the treatment be the same for both of them? So instead of considering uh, osteoarthritis case the same for everyone, take it as an individual aspect. Now second thing, what is the need to study osteoarthritis of the knee specifically? If we take the data and as very well explained by Dr. Pradyot that uh, osteoarthritis is a degenerative disorder and it is chronic. So it is a chronic degenerative disorder. So that means with age it increases and increase in age will lead to further degeneration. And if we go with the data of UN population uh, control, we found that uh, it is from last five years to next 20 years. The number of elderly people are going to increase from 12% right now worldwide to 20% in the next two decades. So that means we are going to see a sharp increase in the number of old age people in the next one or two decades. And age is not, it's inevitable. You can't, you know, reduce the age of anyone. But at the same time, you can do something that can help them achieve the best possible body mechanics and best possible, you know, uh, fitness and ability to do, do everything which we can. So taking into that thing into mind, and if considering age thing, like aging is happening in each one of us, you give me just a second, done. So in this second, I, you know, my 25 lakh RBC died in my body. At the same time, in the same second, 20 lakh RBC reformed. So that means aging is going on at the same time, anabolism and catabolism, both are going on simultaneously. So that is the thing we need to consider while treating a patient that you can't stop aging, but there are some factors which you can take into consideration, which you can alter. Those are what we call modifiable risk factors in osteoarthritis. So today we are going to discuss the causes and the modifiable risk factors of osteoarthritis knee along with the pathomechanics. Like, like always we study that like this is a condition, that is a condition. But in case of physiotherapy, being a movement scientist, you should be considering the pathomechanics, the alteration of the normal movement synergy, normal movement pattern, how it is altered. So that thing you need to consider. So for uh, studying the pathomechanics, first we need to know what all symptoms and causes are there for osteoarthritis knee. So starting with the symptoms of and causes, the, you have two types of osteoarthritis primary and secondary generally when you talk about primary osteoarthritis you have that occurs primarily because of the age changes whensoever your teacher teaches you whatsoever they teach you you should be having two questions in mind why and how if you have these two things in your mind then you can easily become the better than the best because it's not something like 
people say that practice makes you perfect it's not practice it's perfect practice that makes you perfect so with that thing so aging as age increases degeneration increases primarily leads to osteoarthritis knee what about secondary osteoarthritis in secondary osteoarthritis you have something else leading to osteoarthritis so that it's secondary to some pre existing condition that condition may be obesity it may be genetics it may be sedentary lifestyle or a primary injury in talking about why and how of these causes you have obesity because when ever the weight is high the bmi that is the body mass index is on the higher side the weight on the knee increases three times so with 1 kg increase in body weight the load on the knee will be 3 kg that means because why it's happening because the ground reaction force increases along with that the body weight increases so it's three times the body weight that falls on the knee leading to further degeneration of the joint second thing is your sedentary lifestyle a sedentary individual is not burning calories he is just resting the whole day at the same time he is consuming food and having everything which he can so that way his intake is good but output is not so that is ultimately leading to you know gain in weight and reduction in muscular strength and that reduction in muscular strength leads to increased load because muscles take away the loads on on the uh, joints specifically the knee if you talk about the quadriceps and hamstring they contract to take away the load of the joint so they offload the joint but that's not happening in a sedentary individual because of the muscle weakness third thing if we talk about the genetics yes genetics do play a role because in, in genetic component you have a autosomal autosomal dominant trait you have col gene col 2a1 so that is affected in this particular patients col 2a1 gene is you know that is the one that codes for collagen type 2 so that gets hampered its activity leads to degeneration of the articular cartilage because co uh, collagen type 2 forms the articular cartilage and it is coded by the col 2a1 gene so that is why the degeneration is more in case of genetic component so the knee osteoarthritis is inherited in 40% of the people it's not a direct trait but it is seen that in 40% of people specifically women the knee osteoarthritis is found in their offsprings when they become older so chances are more and last but not the least is the injury component so in the injury component you have something called inflammation when the injury happens inflammation ensues and otherwise as well in the knee joint we have interleukin 1 being released all around the knee joint when injury happens the inflammation leads to increase in the interleukin 1 and cytokines that further deteriorates the cartilage and leads to further deterioration of the inner architecture of the knee so these were the you know causes that were leading to osteoarthritis now what all symptoms do you see and what are the pathomechanical aspects of those symptoms what happens is when the aging effect causes further damage to the articular cartilage it leads to uh, some holes and potholes in the cartilage now that damage leads to increase in the inflammatory markers in the joint not of much concern to us because we can't actually help it but yes at the same time it leads to further increase in the amount of synovial fluid the synovial mem membrane because of the injury releases more synovial fluid the fluid increases in normal knee joint do you know how much is the synovial fluid amount how much synovial fluid is there in the normal knee joint comment in the comment section yeah yeah so in the normal knee joint you have 0.15 to 4 ml of synovial fluid but in case of damage in the articular cartilage the amount increases 3 to 4 times that means around 12 ml of the fluid is there in the knee now this you know very well that there is a capsule outside the joint and the synovial membrane so these got distended because of the increase in the synovial fluid inside the joint 
and now the distension of the capsule and inflammation is there synovial distension capsular distension because of the increased synovial fluid along with that you, uh, you might have read wolf's law julius wolf gave a law that uh, whensoever there is an external stress on the bony structures there is uh, adjoining internal architecture change and the change in the shape of the bone so that applies here that is applicable what happens is uh, when the force increases on the knee because of because your body is so beautifully designed that it is so adaptive when you put excessive stress on the knees because of the altered mechanics that leads to stress on the knee structures and the force increases now pressure is equal to force per unit area now the because the force increased the pressure increased on the knee structures now to get rid of that pressure either you can decrease the force or you can increase the surface area force the body reduces by altering the body mechanics by shifting the weight right or left or somehow in various planes that we'll be discussing at the same time the surface area that get increased to counter the, the extra weight that's being put on that part so that's uh, you know uh, countered by increasing the bony projections so bone remodeling occurs and it leads to formation of osteophytes osteophyte formation ensues and that further leads to further damage to the capsule and synovial membrane so further leading to more increase in synovial fluid ultimately there becomes a vicious cycle of increase in synovial fluid increase in distension of the capsule and again osteophyte formation further damage so it is a chronic progressive degenerative disorder now it is up to you how you can stop this progression and now we are going to discuss that thing so coming to the progression thing and pathomechanics of the joint if we see the joint we will be discussing two things one is static position second is while walking the gait mechanics so in static position when the individual is let's say standing and you are looking at the individual on the sagittal plane so the sagittal plane is the one that goes in the midline and divides my body in two parts right and left so if you are looking me from the side that way and we are looking at the knee joint because why I am telling you you are looking because whenever the patient comes to you he will be coming and we are always taught that your observation starts from the moment the patient enters your clinic or hospital lab so that is the thing when as soon as he enters he or she you have to be much vigilant about how he or she is walking the way he or she is standing when they came to you so these things need to be taken care of so this is observation with observation only you can guide the treatment in the completely different manner so on observation part on the sagittal plane looking from the side what you will be seeing is in a patient with osteoarthritis of knee the classical finding you may find is the orientation of the femur bone generally it has been found with much evidence that the femur is tilted backwards so if i'm standing like this my femur will tilt backward like this and that leads to now the femur goes backward tibia is straight so the angle between femur and tibia is decreased and decrease in ang angle between the femur and tibia is called flexion of the knee so the flexion of the knee ensues following the posterior tilting of the femur so in a patient with osteoarthritis of knee you will find posterior tilting of femur along with flexion of the knee joint now when the femur goes backwards your body in compensation so femur went back your knee flexed your body will go forward to compensate so when your body goes forward your hip joint is flexed because your femur already was here it went back posterior tilting of femur and alongside your body was here and it went forward so this thing the angle between your thigh and your femur your thigh and your upper body the spine that gets decreased and leads to increase in the uh, flexion at the spinal joint 
alongside what happens is because of the pain because of other issues what happens is with the flexion in knee it has been seen that the back also flexes further but the sacrum doesn't move so the sacrum is stuck straight with the femur but the upper spine moves forward so what happens normally we do have a lumbar curvature like this so you have a curvature here is the sacrum and here is the upper spine so this is the lumbar lordosis now the sacrum is not moving but the upper spine is moving forward so that means the lumbar lordosis is lost and the spine is goes into flexion so this flexion of the spine with loss of lumbar lordosis leads to back pain so that is a common presentation you see in your patients with knee osteoarthritis so that is what we call knee spine syndrome so when so you see a patient it should be a dynamic approach that's why we tell you that uh, you should look up joint ahead a uh, joint below because it is a complete kinetic chain that plays action in a patient with any pathology for that matter as of now knee osteoarthritis so this was the sideline view the sagittal view now what if the patient is standing in front of you and you want to see what all changes can you observe in the frontal aspect frontal view right frontal means a plane that is passing in between my body and dividing it into front and back so that is the frontal view of my body frontal plane so frontal view will you will see that the knees are going into varus or valgus varus means both the knees going outwards like this okay distending outwards or they may be going inwards knock knee right that is valgus deformity at the knee now why does that now that why and how comes into action why does that uh, varus or valgus happens so in case of uh, that varus force it is your movement arm movement so movement arm the adduction movement increases at the knee knee adduction movement increases so here was the foot what happens is as the patient places one single step what happens is the forces goes from his body towards the ground so as the disease progress the knee start going outwards and the force start pulling it down so here is the femur here is the tibia and with the change in alignment it goes like this the adduction movement pulls it further down the force of gravity and it goes further like varum position at the knee so this thing uh, adding on to the earlier components because you saw knee flexion movement as well and you saw knee adduction movement as well so these led to knee flexion deformity and knee varum at the same time so these thing combinedly lead to the pathomechanic commonly observed in the frontal and sagittal plane now last but not the least we have the transverse plane in the transverse plane it is seen that there is more of a outward rotation of the femur and there is more of a internal rotation of the tibia to compensate for that thing so there is a compensatory mechanism that leads to deterioration of the screw home mechanism that is the mainstay of you know working mechanics of the knee joint so screw home mechanism says that your tibia should rotate outwards when the knee extends to completely lock the knee in extension but here what's happening is because of femur has gone a lot towards the external rotation component the tibia rotates inwards and that leads to you know decrease of the out toeing and decrease of the angle leading to further increase in the adduction movement at the knee and when the adduction movement so this is the femur this is the tibia lower one is the tibia femur now the adduction movement increased what happens is now here is the tibial condyles and the femoral condyles because of the adduction movement the medial tibial condyle that gets increased stress so osteoarthritis is seen more in case of medial component rather than the lateral component along with that especially in females why the osteoarthritis cases are seen more because in female uh, people uh, female patients 
what we see is the alignment of the pelvis they have a wider pelvis shorter stature along with the q angle at the knee the q angle is the line passing from asis to mid of patella and tibial tuberosity to mid of patella that angle is called q angle so that is increased leading to further velgum here so velgum again leads to medial or lateral component osteoarthritis so alongside we should not you know forget about patellofemoral osteoarthritis because that's also a component of the knee complex so in case of pat patellofemoral joint what happens is as i told you the knee flexion increases in the sagittal plane the flexion leads to with every step the force is going at the back side of the articulocartilage of the patella that leads to stress on the patella so that increases the stresses and ultimately leads to more patellofemoral osteoarthritis now coming to the this was the static component now coming to the dynamic that is gait component gait cycle means how you walk how you resume your movements while moving what happens is on the sagittal plane when uh, the pa patient puts the first very first step uh you might have learned the rla terminology and walking gait cycle you have 60% of the gait cycle you have the stance phase and uh, 40% you have the swing phase so it is the percentage of the stance and swing that takes place in the gait cycle so these percentages and you have single limb and double limb phase so when you put your first step your heel touches the ground what happens is the knee flexion is more at that time because of the flexion contracture that developed the increased knee flexion movement and these lead to increase in flexion at the initial contact and uh, that is the main causative factor in case of patellofemoral osteoarthritis then as the patient places a foot down that is the loading response or the flat component at that time what happens is the knee flexion at that time should be increased but that decreases at that time so the mechanics is totally disturbed ideally as the patient goes in from the initial contact to feet flat component the loading response the flexion should reduce but now it's increasing so that way and followed by that when the person is walking at that time what happens is while walking you see uh, as he place the feet flat mid stance heel off and toe off as the toe off and shoes the swing phase starts now the swing phase has pre swing mid swing and off swing so in these phases what happens is the tibia moves forwards and the femur is up tibia is moving forward into extension now when the tibia is moving forward into extension according to concave convex rule the tibia being concave should roll and slide in the same direction so that means when it's going forward it's extending the concave structures being the concave part the roll and slide so it will be rolling forward and the slide will also be forward in the knee joint but that doesn't happen so it is retained there and the femur moves forward ideally so the femur moves forward instead of the tibia and that leads to further deterioration of the knee mechanics and ultimately leading to increased stress at the knee so this was the sagittal plane analysis of the gait cycle in patient with osteoarthritis knee now coming to the frontal plane analysis as the patient places his foot what happens uh, as we discussed the flex, uh, increased knee adduction movement so the knee adduction movement further because he is on single leg right now so because he is on single leg the adduction movement further increases because the weight passing through a single leg increases further so that increase in adduction movement at the knee along with a single leg stance leads to further deterioration and further medial compartment knee oa in case of adduction movement and alongside one more thing you see in your patients with the osteoarthritic knee is that they walk like this and this this is what you call waddling gait why that happens in a patient with osteoarthritis Uh, in general, normally what we uh, our body does is when I'm standing on my single leg, so my pelvis, my my I'm standing on my right leg, right? My pelvis on the right leg, uh, right side. My abductor muscles on the right side. 
are supporting my pelvis and holding it like this. So they are pulling it and supporting it straight. But what happens in case of people with osteoarthritic knee, these muscles, the hip abductors, they get weaker. So when they get weaker, the pelvis is not at all, no longer supported with these muscles and it goes down. But you see these people are walking. So how are they walking? They use other alternative strategy. So instead of using their abductors, what they do is, as soon as they start, start standing on one leg, and what they do is, they move towards the right side to compensate. See, you have two things, either your active components or passive components. Either the muscles can actively contract and support you, or you have to take, uh, you know, stress on the passive components to support the body. So they take care of the passive thing. So they move their body to the right instead of contracting their right abductors. So the moving to the right, it pulls the pelvis up on the left side. And when the pelvis is pulled up, it leads to, you know, lateral lean with every step. So they are walking like this and this. With every step, they are lateral leaning towards the side. So these things are the ones you need to take care of while considering, while assessing a patient with knee osteoarthritis. Moving on to the special treatment guidelines. Now, I will not say that you should go with this particular treatment and ultrasound is the best or knee isometrics or this or that. As I mentioned earlier, it is individualized. I will tell you the considerations, but the treatment you need to do yourself. And with that, I mean, first and foremost, as we discussed, pain is there. So for pain, you can use ice pack. You can use hot pack if the inflammation is not there. You can use uh, TENS or IFT or maybe for medial component uh, osteoarthritis or lateral component you can specifically use for the midline you can use ultrasound so that is for pain relief that is different right alongside you should be focusing on how to prevent further progression of knee osteoarthritis for that thing you should be very much considerate that what are the other things you have increased knee adduction movement so what can you do for increased knee adduction movement so first and foremost, you can use lateral wedge insoles and lateral wedge insoles are put in the foot, the shoes and they take your foot like this, lateral aspect, they support like this. Okay. So now and alongside, then what happens is that that creates a force towards the tibia and pushes the tibia towards the medial side. So reducing the knee adduction movement because of the ground reaction force. Second thing, you can use uh, three compartmental pushing orthosis uh, and uh, braces that can support the knee. And you have calipers, you have knee braces that can, you, you know, you can tighten them up or you can hold the braces in one place. They can support the outer structures and reduce the knee adduction movement. On part of knee flexion movement, yes, you can reduce that by mo mobilizing the fascia on the posterior aspect of the thigh and posterior aspect of the calf, first thing. So if you mobilize the fascia, the flexion movement will reduce because that will not no further be, uh, no longer be pulling the posterior aspect structures. So that way it will be eased off and you will get rid of the posterior component stretch and all issues that are happening. And alongside, you can go for strengthening of the medial musculature of the knee joint. And that should not be your classical quadriceps isometrics. It should be something, uh, you know, adaptive. So you can go for uh, TheraBand strengthening along with stressing the medial component as well along with the frontal component. Alongside, uh, you need to take care of while walking, why the patient is walking slow so gait speed you need to take care of because uh, the ground reaction force increases as you start walking fast because if you start running the ground reaction force is seven times your body weight if you start uh, jogging your ground reaction force is 3.5 times your body weight if you are just walking normally still your ground reaction force is 1.5 to 2 times your body weight so that means you should be very much considerate that because the patient is getting more ground reaction force while walking fast, he is walking slow. So you should be very much vigilant that uh, you should do something, some strategies 
to decrease the ground reaction force and how that can be done that will be done by altering these components so you can give them real time feedback to walk fast along with decreasing the knee adduction movement so that will lead to reduction of the stresses on the knee and that will ultimately lead to betterment of the patient so friends these things you need to very much consider it of if you take these things into consideration your patients are going to get much better than they were and you will get amazing results because and you keep on learning that's the best part that's the main thing you can do right now this lockdown phase is has come to just to make you learn something new so become adaptive as our body is adaptive you should also be adaptive because rome was not built in a day but yes it was built day by day so you should practice day by day to make yourself better than you were earlier and one day you will be better than the best with these words i would like to conclude thank you so much stay safe goodbye